When you think about cruising, most first time cruisers think about two cruise lines, Royal Caribbean and Carnival. But how do you pick between them? What makes them different? And should you base your decision solely on which one is cheaper? Our advice is to consider a few different factors when choosing which cruise line is best for you. We've been on Royal Caribbean and Carnival Cruise Lines many times, and we want to give you our perspective to help you decide which one is best for you. To help you make a decision, we're going to rate each cruise line in five categories. Price and affordability, food, onboard entertainment, their private islands, and atmosphere. What was it like when we were on the cruise ships? What did we think about that? We're going to do this in hopes to help you make a better decision on which line is best for you and your family. And then just for fun, at the end, we'll tell you which cruise line we like best. Royal Caribbean has traditionally been known as a cruise ship that has some of the largest cruise ships in the world. Well, now Carnival is competing. They're going head to head, or I guess bow to bow, with Royal Caribbean, since their release of the Mardi Gras, you know, the one that has the big roller coaster on top of it. And so how do you really decide which one is better now that both sides have huge ships with a lot of entertainment and a lot of neat things to do? Where else can you go ride a roller coaster at sea, right? Which one is best for you and your family? Well, let's start with our first review, and that's entertainment. Carnival is known as the fun ship, and they do have a lot of entertainment choices. They also have some production shows, but they fall a little short compared to some of the other cruise lines that I've been on. The area where Carnival really separates themselves is in any other entertainment, especially for adults. Carnival is known as the party ship, and they have a lot of entertainment from bars, nightclubs, comedy clubs, and they have a lot of entertainment around the pools as well. Some of these activities cost extra to go see, so make sure that if you're planning on going to some of these shows that you look to see if it's included in the price of the fare or if that's something that you're going to have to pay for. Carnival markets themselves as the fun ship, and I think that they're pretty close to that. They do have a lot of entertainment, and we had a great time on there, especially if you're looking for a party atmosphere. And for that, I'll give Carnival four ships. Toot toot! Royal Caribbean has long been known as one of the leaders in cruise ship entertainment, especially for shows that's not normally seen on cruise ships. They were first to offer an onboard ice skating rink, as well as water acrobats. It's offered on some of their bigger ships. They also have some fantastic Broadway-style shows. A couple of my favorite are Grease and Hairspray. I really didn't think I was a big Broadway person, uh, but Royal really made these fun and interesting. Their show in the Aqua Theater is also Broadway worthy. There's some spectacular feats there where they have some uh, aerial uh, wire walkers that's up way above the ship. They're walking on these wires while the ship is moving, sailing through the ocean. So that in itself is a feat that, you know, you got to see. It's fantastic. They also have some uh, high divers that jump off some of the highest points on the back of the ship into the water below. Royal Caribbean also has several different types of shows. They have some comedy shows. They do trivia nights. They have a lot of different entertainment that's fun for the entire family. And for the kiddos, they also have several different areas that'd be great for them. They have little water park areas. Uh, some of the ships have bumper cars, laser tag. For their quality and entertainment and the variety that they offer, I give Royal Caribbean four and a half ships on their entertainment. Toot toot. Now let's get to one of my favorite topics, food. Carnival didn't used to be known for its food quality, but recently they have partnered with Guy Fieri and they have a Guy's Burger now on all of their ships. And the best part of all, it's included. They also have the Blue Iguana Cantina that's up around the pool area. They serve a lot of burritos and Mexican fare. While the buffet isn't much to talk about, I was pleasantly surprised on one of our last cruises that the quality of food has really improved compared to some of the um, cruises that we've had in the past. One of the things that I really enjoyed about it was their Sea Day brunch. So we were able to sleep in a little bit that morning because we didn't have a lot going on. That was a great option to have on a sea day. In the past, I would have probably given Carnival a three ship based on the quality of food that they've had in the past. 
now with the addition of guys and they've really improved their buffet food the dining room food has really improved as well I'm gonna give them a bump up I'm gonna say now for food quality on carnival four ships toot, toot. when it comes to Royal Caribbean they have a lot of great food options the only issue is many of them are not included one very unique option that we tried is Wonderland. Now we did this more, more or less because it was intriguing. It was more of an artistic take on food. So it, it's kind of weird. That's why it's Wonderland. It's kind of an Alice in Wonderland kind of theme. So it's really hard to explain, but I'll describe it best I can. One of the things they gave us was a uh, vial. It almost looked like a test tube and it was a tomato soup, but it was perfectly clear. It looked like it was filled with water. But when you drink it, it tasted like tomato juice. So that whole restaurant was themed about or themed around weird food and artistic styles, that type of thing. What did we think about the quality? Eh, would we go back? Probably not for the price it was. But it was definitely something that I'm glad I did. And I would recommend going just for the experience. Because really, that's what it's all about, is just adventuring out and trying something different. And you really can't get much different than Wonderland. Another great place on Royal is Johnny Rockets. Now, unfortunately, this isn't included in the price either. However, there is a trick that some people just don't know about. And that is Johnny Rockets is included in the morning for breakfast. So if you go down early enough, you can have Johnny Rockets and it's included in the price of your cruise fare. But if you wait too late in the day, well, then it does cost extra, unfortunately. If that's not for you, well, they do have a lot of complimentary dining options that's available with some absolutely fantastic food. I would have to say that of all the cruise lines I've been on, Royal has always been consistent with pretty high quality food across all of the ships that uh, that we've sailed on in the past. I'd have to say, even without paying for any specialty dining at all, you can have a fantastic experience with some very good, high quality food on any of the Royal Caribbean ships. And for this reason, I give Royal four and a half ships. Toot toot. Carnival has a private island, Half Moon K, but unfortunately, they share that with another cruise line, Holland America. And the major draw for the Carnival Island is their beach. Carnival does claim to have one of the best beaches of all the cruise line private islands. And I would say they're probably not far off. It is a really high quality beach area. However, the downfall is they don't have a lot of room on the beach. So they have taken all these beach chairs and they have just packed them together for as far as you can see down the beach with no room really in between them, just enough to walk down in front. And with very little shade in this area, it just doesn't look that comfortable. So if you don't mind being crammed into a tight space just to enjoy the beach, well, maybe this will be okay for you. Carnival does offer a lot of activities, however, most of those, unfortunately, are not included in the price and are going to cost extra, like paddle boarding, the water bike, uh, swimming with the stingrays, any of those activities, you're going to be paying out extra money just to go do those. The younger kids can go over and play at Half Moon Bay. Over there, they have a little water area and a fun pirate ship. They also have basketball court, volleyball, shuffleboard, and a uh, little playground area. Carnival provides one free buffet, and it's open from 11.30 to 1.30, and that's it. And it's Barbecue Island. So if you don't want barbecue food, well, then you have one other option for eating on this island, and that's the Lobster Shack. Unfortunately, that's going to cost you about $20 a person to go eat there. If you don't like barbecue and you don't want to pay money, your only other option for food is to go back to the cruise ship, have the buffet, and then come back to the island. So because they are sharing with another cruise line, they don't have very many food options at all out there. Most all activities that you want to do, you're going to have to pay for, and you're crammed in on the beach and you can't even relax and really enjoy yourself. I have to give Carnival's Private Island 
two and a half ships. Toot toot. I have been to several cruise line private islands, and Royal Caribbean's Coco Cay is by far one of my favorites. Even though their water park does cost extra, it's really not any different than it paying for an excursion at another cruise port. This is a really fun water park, and it's one of the biggest draws for many of their Caribbean itineraries. Some of the itineraries even stop there twice. If you don't want to pay extra, there's still a lot to choose from, like Captain Jill, Oasis Lagoon, or you can just hang out at one of the beaches. Royal Caribbean does have three different eateries on their islands that you can choose from that are included. So you can pick from uh, Chill Grill, Skipper's Grill, or the Snack Shack. The only eatery that's not included is Captain Jack's. So if you want that one, it will cost you a little bit extra. And another great feature is if you've purchased the beverage package on the cruise ship or even the Wi-Fi, that is included on the island. So you can bring your cup with you and the beverage package will work there on the island as well or connect to your Wi-Fi, do whatever work you want to. You can FaceTime your friends, family, or coworkers and you know tease them about where you're at and they're not. Unlike some of the islands that we've attended in the past, Coco Cay's food is really good and it's up there with the quality that you'll find on the ship. And there's such a variety to choose from as well. Because of the fantastic food, the activities that's included, the water park option that is just absolutely fantastic, and just the whole feeling of the island itself overall, I have to give Royal Caribbean Coco Cay five ships. Toot toot. Let's talk about price now. Because I know price is a big part of making a decision. Carnival has traditionally been known as a cheaper cruise line, offering low-priced weekend cruises where you can just get away real quick. They also offer longer cruise options, which are very affordable as well. Carnival also seems to offer a lot more sales than Royal Caribbean does. I've seen some pricing come in at like $99 a person for some of their shorter cruises. With their low prices and many itineraries, this makes Carnival a great option for many families who are trying to find something within their budget. For their affordability, their pricing options, and their itineraries, I give Carnival four and a half ships. Toot toot. In recent years, Royal Caribbean has gotten more affordable. They still typically price out higher than Carnival, However, with Royal, uh, you are getting newer and more modernized fleet of ships for the price. Royal has started offering a lot more shorter cruise options to go with their longer itineraries. They've even extended their longer ones. They now offer a world cruise. So if you wanted to see the world on a cruise ship, now you have that opportunity with Royal. Finding an affordable Royal Caribbean cruise is getting easier, and it's starting to fit into more and more families' budgets. However, they are still pricing higher than Carnival, and for this reason, I give Royal four ships. Toot toot. Carnival is known as the fun ship, and they market themselves as such. With their low cost, their many itineraries, and their party atmosphere, they attract a large demographic of people. Unfortunately, some of those people are not real respectful, and they've been causing Carnival a lot of issues lately. My wife recently went on a carnival cruise and witnessed two different fights while she was on there, as well as one of the entertainers, a comedian, had to be escorted off the ship at the next port because he was getting threats from some of the cruise customers. In an attempt to help control some of this, Carnival has recently introduced a curfew for anybody that is under 18 years of age. Now, I'm not saying at all that Carnival is a bad ship or you're going to have a bad experience if you take a Carnival cruise. What I am saying, however, is that when you have a cheaper cruise line that appeals to so many people, you're bound to get a few bad apples. And for this reason, I have to give Carnival three and a half ships for the atmosphere. Toot toot. Now, with Royal Caribbean, they've often priced much higher than Carnival. However, they are becoming more affordable, but they still haven't hit that affordability spot for many other cruisers. 
I've been on several Royal Caribbean ships, and I've had a great time on all of them. Royal is not really known as a party ship. They have more of a family atmosphere. Royal does offer plenty of chances to go party and have a good time, but it just has a different feel than what Carnival has. So if I had to describe the difference between the two, I would say that Royal is more of a polo shirt and Bermuda shorts kind of atmosphere, where on Carnival you get more of the mullet and sleeveless shirt atmosphere. From all the Royal ships that I've been on, uh, they really have great consistency with the atmosphere throughout. And for this reason, I'm going to give Royal four and a half ships. Toot toot. So which cruise line is best for you? That really depends. So I said in the beginning, I would tell you which one I prefer. I lean more towards Royal because of the atmosphere and I like the more laid back style. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't take another Carnival. I would gladly take one at any time. I do like Carnival Cruises. I just prefer the more laid back atmosphere of Royal. So if you're looking for something cheap, you don't care where it goes, you just want to get away for a weekend, then you might want to lean towards Carnival. If you're looking for something a little higher quality, uh, maybe go to a private island and have a more laid back experience, then you may want to look into Royal Caribbean. To me, it doesn't matter which one of these that you pick. If that's what you're looking for, you're going to have a great time. You just need to know kind of the difference between the two, and that's what we're here to do is to help you make a decision based on our experiences. I really hope that you found this video useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next adventure.